focus and re record all over again, uh, close all the window and turn it back on and it worked now. So um, I'm so sorry there was no audio earlier so I'm just going to go over what I was going to do um, real quick. Um, welcome to Art Anthology channel. Uh, my name is Dendar and I am creating this page right here and I will let you know the colors that um, I'm using for this page um, along with um, the techniques and things like that. So first I'm just matting pieces of cardboard onto my page and as you see I am just creating the mosaic effect on um, the two side of the page right here and um, once I'm done I'm going to add color and pull them all in together towards the mi middle of the page. So I am just scooping up some uh, gel medium. Um, this is hev heavy gel medium right here. Um, it's a very, very quick dry adhesive. It might be dried on this uh, spatula right here since um, I've let it out for a while uh, while I was tra troubleshooting my computer. Um, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, so let's just keep working. Yes, it is a little dry, but um, it's still working. So I'm just gonna keep using this. And I'm just going to cut up some of these into smaller pieces so that they give this um, uneven uh, mosaic look. And um, this is a piece of packaging that I've cut up um, from, I'm not quite sure uh, what I purchased. I, I must have purchased something from Daiso and uh, that's a packaging that comes with this. So it's a little hard to work with this gel medium because it's dried, so let me just get smaller quantity to make it easier to work because it's a bit flaky now. I am recording, yes, Marilyn. a bit messy because my gel medium got dry since I left it out um, to troubleshoot for the audio but it is perfectly fine because we're going to be applying more colors and medium on top of this. And I'm just going to fill in smaller pieces in between the big pieces. Um. And this piece is a little lopsided, but once you cover it up with paints a medium, it will not be too obvious. Okay, so that's that, and let me cap my heavy matte medium because this dries really quick. And the next layer that I'm going in with is this joint tape. Um, this is just um, drywall tape from um, construction store. Um, you could purchase it any home store. Um, this is available at Home Depot.
and I am just overlapping this pieces of joint tape to my mosaic pieces to create more texture onto my page. Push it in a little bit. Like this, okay. Maybe a bit more joint tape. So let me pull out about this much. I should be okay. to put a piece right here and another piece over here so I am pretty much done with the background now I'm going to start adding colors to this page before adding color I'm going to go ahead and prime the page with this mud medium a uh, mud medium could work either as a texture paste or paint primer which sort of replace um, gesso and modeling paste all together so I'm just going to cover it up real quick and um, and let me hold this up here to see if you could see the brush strokes on this so that's the effect of um, mud medium. Um, after it's dry, you could see those strokes on the page. So notice that I am running my brush either horizontally or vertically, but not diagonally across the page because I would like my brush strokes only in those two ways um, but not horizontal not diagonal across the page okay so I'm done with this side of the page so let me fold this up so you can see those um, brush stroke that mud median creates okay so I will do the same thing on the other side of the page okay After this, I'm just going to give it a quick dry with my heat tool. So see the brush stroke right here. So that adds a lot of details in the texture, um, in the background texture, by brushing on this mud medium. Once it's dry, I'm going to go ahead and add some pigment. 
So the first pigment that I'm going to use is Patience in Coloration Spray. And I am going to just blot this with a piece of paper because I only want my patient pinks on the borders of the pages. Okay, I'm going to hold it a little far away from the page so that it's spread out evenly. And I'll do the same on this other side of the page. Okay. And do the same thing on the bottom. And for this part, I'm just going to stamp, stamp this out. You see my envelope is really wet. So if I get dry, I'm just going to stamp this out so that I won't be, I won't be um, wasting my colors. And it did not work. So let's just spray it on. So this really hot pink color right here is my, just, my camera just fall. I'm so sorry. Things are not working well today, I apologize. Okay. I found out that the clip on my camera is not holding to my wine bottle, my camera stand, tight enough. So, okay. Can everybody see me okay now? So this color right here is um, Patience color. It's a really hot pink color and um, it's so pretty. So I just spray it on um, the borders of the page and I'm just going to go ahead and dry it right now. Okay, it's all nice and dry. And the next color that I'm going in with is this color velvet paint in cotton candy color and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply some paint on this border like so and pull it towards the middle of the page like so so notice um, the texture from the joint tape show up Maybe it went away. Okay. Okay. Can everybody still hear me? Or okay, my screen just got blanked out real quick, but I get I guess I'm still streaming. Okay, so I'm frozen. Uh I'm back on my screen. So I think you stream is just wonky today. Okay, so it must be the commercial break that they're trying to go back and forth and um, got frozen. So I could just apply some velvet paint on the side of the page and pull it towards the middle. So I'll be doing the same thing over and over again for a few seconds. So for those of who are on commercial, don't worry about it because it's the same technique that I'm doing over and over again for the entire page. So I'm just going to apply velvet on the side of the page and pull it towards the middle of the page. Like so. Okay. And I am doing the same thing on the side of the page as well. Sort of dab some paint and pulling it towards the middle of the page. Okay, so I'm back on screen now for everybody. I think you stream is just a little slow today and it get wonky when it switch back and forth from commercial. I think that's what's happening. <laughs> Okay, so I am done with this one color and I forget to bring some water for my brush. So let me go grab that just, just a second.
Okay, I got some water. <laughs> Put my brush over here and over here. Okay, the next color that I'm going in with is velvet in wineberry color. And that is a really um, nice purple tone color. I love it. This is my favorite color. So I'm just going to pick it up with some wet brush and um, dab off the extra paint on my craft mat and just go in with this paint at random spot like so. I don't want too much so I am only picking it up a little bit at a time and have all the extra on my craft mat. And I'm just going to frame this page a little bit on the side like so and I will do the same thing on this side okay and then how I'm going to blend between the color is that this is just a cheapy hand lotion from a dollar store so I'm just gonna drop some hand lotion on my wet paint medium and start blending that in Isn't it fun? <laughs> You're playing lotion on the art journal page, but it is so much fun. And as I'm doing it, I'm picking up more paint just to create um, different shades on this page. Okay. Maybe a little bit of lotion. Okay. And. I am using lotion as my blending medium, yes. Okay. And notice I'm not letting my paint dry in between layers because I want to blend them all together with my lotion to create this different effect. Okay. I think I am done with wineberry color. Or maybe I can add a little bit more with the smaller brush over here just to create more concentrated color towards the side okay and then let me clean this off and the next color that I'm going in with is sorbet in tiger eye Okay, so I'm just going to use keep using my hand since I am using lotion as my blending medium. Okay, and I'll have some lotion on my craft mat so that I can pick it up whenever I feel like I need more medium to get it blended with the next color in line. Okay, so I'm going back and forth between tiger eye paint and lotion I mean you could go and purchase um, blending medium such as medium matte gel or puffy paint from art store or you can just go to a dollar store and pick up a bottle of lotion. So it really is up to you. <laughs> right? Okay, so I'm just blending it back and forth. Okay. So that's the um, tiger eye color and um, the next color that I'm going in with is this Canyon Copper color which is a little bit um, darker than Tiger Eye color so I am going to keep blending it in the same manner Okay. 
So yesterday I have shown a lot about splashes, splash, splashes splattering and um, teacup stain. In fact, today is going to be all about blending color. I will be showing you the different techniques that I use to blend my color. This amongst one of the techniques that I'm going to show today. Okay. And I am just putting in this um, copper color around my tiger eye color so that it sort of look like a two-tone effect. Okay. So I am going to let this dry a bit or you know what let me blend a little more with the lotion because I want to give it sort of a brush stroke kind of effect towards the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up my leftover lotion from craft mat and apply it towards the middle of the page before the paint dry so that gives you this brush stroke effect towards the middle of the page that makes sense and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side okay Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and dry this page. So that's blending pretty well. I apply about four colors and um, the transition looked pretty smooth. So, so I could say I like lotion as blending medium. pages are dry thoroughly I am going to put some teacup stain effect on it and for that I am going to use um, this wine berry color again and yesterday I showed you how to create this using the bottle cap here so what I'm going to do is the same technique again so I'm just going to have some water on my craft mat and pull out some paint with my brush and mix it with some water until I get to the consistency that I want and I'm just going to start stamping that randomly on the page using the cap
and then I'm just going to pick up the leftover paint and highlight randomly on the corner of the page because the concept of this page is to have darker colors on the side of the page pulling towards the middle. So I'm just going to highlight a bit more on the side of the page. Okay, and I'm just going to add a little bit more water. You see these streaks of the paint on the side right here? I want to blend it into the middle, so I'm just going to use some water to blend it before it gets dry. Water is a great blending medium, but often time when we work on paper, the paper can get um, damaged if we apply too much water. Um, that's where hand lotion gets in handy because it does not damage the page as much as water does. Okay, so I'm just pulling it towards the middle, just blending it randomly with some water. Okay, let me clean that out real quick and let's get that dry. So next, I'm going to highlight the spaces in between of my mosaic using the same color, Wineberry, which is my favorite color, and um, somebody's about to make me really sad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm just going to apply it with this um, flat wash or brush um, in between this my mosaic layer like so so that just add a little bit of highlight onto the page okay so I will do the same thing on this side way it turns out right now so let me get this dry real quick and this page the color is kind of bright for my taste so I want to tone it down by using some brown color and I think I am going to use, where is my chocolate color? Chocolate color, sorbet right here. And this technique work when you dried up all the layer and you want to add another layer, but everything is dry. It's too late to blend in. What you would do is you would mix your paint with some lotion to create this translucent effect to make it more translucent and start up brushing on top of your layer and use your lotion this brush is kind of wet so I just kind of destroyed it so let me start over again so use my lotion with chocolate color and apply a bit of brown onto my page I would have put my chocolate color 
along with the other color and blend, blend it with lotion, but I did not remember to do that earlier. So I'm going back in with lotion. It does not blend as well as if you do it before the paint dries, but what you gotta do is what you gotta do, right? So I put a little bit of brown on it just to tone down all these bright colors and I'm gonna go ahead and dry it real quick now and while I'm doing that I'm directing the flow of the paint to where I want using my heat tool like so So I am done with the background on this page. Now you can start doodling, stamping, and do whatever you want with this page. Um, here on my example, I have stamped out some borders and background, and I've doodled some stitches using my uh, markers um, over here, and um, did some splattering with my paint. So let's let's do some splattering with the screen blank out again. So patient paint that I use on the border. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of splatter by shaking off my spray head onto my art journal. I'm just gonna give it a quick dry. After this, I am just grabbing my background stamp and just going to stamp, start uh, stamping this on the page randomly. So let's see. some effect, cool effect on the border, like so. Over here, when I buy these um, clear stamp, I like cutting out the acetate that the stamp comes on and just use it as a stamp pad instead of peeling it off. I just don't know why I don't like um, mounting and unmounting of the stamp on the stamp block so I keep it with the acetate that comes with the stamp so I don't have to mount and unmount the stamp. Okay, so that's a border. And I am going to add some lines over here randomly. 
okay so it doesn't have to be perfect that's what's good about mixed media is that you could make so many mistakes and nobody will realize that <laughs> okay so I'm just going to add more effect on the background using the background stamp that I have in my stash and notice that I'm just stamping onto the side but not towards the middle because I want to keep all the drama on the side and have everything pull into the middle so that when I journal in the middle the highlight will be pulling towards the journal okay and I think that looks pretty good I could go ahead and do some doodling later um, since it will take a while and so um, the next thing I would do is doodle some of these stitches with um, any color markers that I have in my stash and started writing up the journal so that's the technique that I've create the background on this art journal page so let's move on to next page so for this page I use some velvet in orchid color some velvet in wineberry color and coloration in warmia bay color velvet in baby blue eyes colors and velvet in reef color okay so I am going to use the same technique to create this page so let me prep the page real quick okay So what I'm going to do first is I am going to mount these hexagons. I cut them out um, before the show starts so that it's all ready to go. So I'm just going to grab my gel medium real quick. And start gluing them. So for this page, my dramas and um, textures are kind of in the middle and the interest is pulling towards the side of the page so the only thing on the side of the page is those stencilings okay so I'm going to concentrate towards the middle of the page so all the mosaic tile will stay in the middle of the page okay so let's see if I have any half tiles. Okay, so <coughs> I am just keep keep adding this mosaic tile onto my page to add more texture. Okay.
for this side I'm just going to pull it a little bit towards the corner of the page so what I'm going to do is I am out of gel medium on my spatula so I'm get a little bit more I have a half piece right here I'm just gonna mount it on right here right next to the other half piece so that half and half make one it sort of help uh, that the pieces have some sort of pattern on it but if it doesn't it's still fine you can always stamp on it Like when you have cereal boxes and cut them up, you know, like the labeling of the boxes will create great pattern on that. And this piece has a hole on it because it is part of the packaging and um, there's a hole on that top of that packaging for hanging. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna put it back in here. Let me clean my spatula real quick. So I am done with mounting of my mosaic pieces. So for this piece, I won't be using joint tape for the background. So I am ready to go ahead and prime it with some mud medium. Scrap my mud medium and dry my brush real quick. Let me change up this water. This is really concentrated with a lot of paint. some fresh water okay so I am just going to prime my page with mud medium real quick and as you see I like working in horizontal and vertical orientation so my brush strokes are never diagonally across the page just one of the thing I don't know why I prefer it that way okay so the mud medium has gone on everything's looking good so I'm just going to give it a quick dry Now that it's dry, I am going to do some stenciling on the side. As I have mentioned, um, these paints are not only good to use as um, pigment paint, they're also good to use as um, texture paste. So for this time, I am going to use it as a texture paste. So I'm just going to lay down my stencil like so. Grab a palette knife. Maybe I'll go with this side. I don't like, like the small one beside me. Okay, then grab my palette knife and just use it as texture paste. That's why it's called dimensional paint, right? Because it is so dimensional that it could be used as texture paste. Okay, and I will do the same thing on this side. Maybe I'll flip that over here and stamp it out because there's some residual paint and I don't want to waste it. And I will do this over here and then notice that I'm lifting up the cap, uh, at, at, up the stencil over here so that the stencil will not be touching this paint. 
that I have stencil in this area so that I don't have to keep going back and forth uh, drawing this area and stenciling again so you can just lift it up like this and stencil it okay I'm just gonna grab a bit more and you have a little bit of leftover right here don't worry about it you can keep using it for the next area that you're going to stencil okay so keep doing the same thing for all four corner and I really love this orchid color it's um, sort of a lavender and lilac um, between the two colors So I am done with stenciling using this dimensional paint. Love it so much. I have some left on my palette knife, so not to waste anything. Let's not waste any good stuff, shall we? Okay, so let me get it dry real quick before going in with the next layer. Next, I am going to put in a little bit of brown in the middle just to um, concentrate the color towards the middle. So again, I'm using this uh, chocolate velvet color. And for those who does not know um, the difference between sorbet and velvet, velvet give, give it this um, really smooth um, finish, um, sort of like a matte medium. Um, my sorbet has some glitter in it so you see this glitter um, so I'm just going to use my blending brush to create this um, highlight in the middle so I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of this and start pouncing on to the middle and start brushing and blending so this technique is called dry bl brushing in mixed media world when you want to create some highlight you can just use a dry brush and pounce it to the area that you want so you see this bit of brown in the middle of the page like so okay and then the next color that I'm going in is this baby blue eye color. I kind of wanted to mix it with this brown. So as usual, I'm going to put some lotion on my craft mat. Apply some blue over onto the area that I want. And use my lotion as a blending medium and start blending it. And you see this um, blue color blending it together with the um, chocolate color that I have applied earlier. Really love this effect. And my hands are nice and smooth after I work. That's the other reason I prefer lotion to real art blending mediums. <laughs> okay, and I have some paint left on my brush, so I'm just gonna apply it on here so that I won't be wasting any paint, okay?
And next I'm going to add a before. I, I'm not drying this layer because I don't want um, the color to be separated. I want the colors to blend together. So I'm just going to spray on some uh, Warmia Bay color coloration onto this page. And I want the color to spread out evenly, so I'm just going to hold my spray bottle at a distance from my page, like so, okay? And now I'm going to go ahead and dry this. Um, drippage um, on this area of my mosaic. So I'm using um, velvet in reef color and I'm going to water it down a little bit. Um, so let's just use this watercolor water that I have and add some paint to the water and I'm just going to apply it to the spot where I want my paint splatter. And then I'm just going to hold up the page so the paint will flow like so. Okay. And I will keep doing that throughout my mosaic tile randomly just to add more texture to my page. Okay. So I'm just going to hold it up like so. That one's flowing, this is not, so if it's not flowing well, that means it doesn't have enough paint in it. So just grab your brush and keep adding until it started flowing like so. Okay, so I want it on the other side, on this side right here. So I'm just gonna keep adding my paint paint like, sit, like this so that it will flow, okay? So let's get that dry. my splatters and drips are dried I am going to go ahead and highlight in between my mosaic tile okay so for that I am going to use my favorite wineberry color and what I'm going to do is I am going to use my flat wash brush and apply some brush stroke in between my tile, like so. Easy peasy, right? So that will add a lot of interest to the page. OK, 
Okay, on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going back and forth as I run out of paint on my brush. I just dip a little bit off the bottle and keep going. The fact that the paint is really thick makes it really easy to control. It does not flow over to the side like when you use acrylic paint or something like that. So I really like those dimensional paint. It truly is multifunctional. Looks a lot of fun, huh? So that adds a lot of interest onto the middle of the page. And let's get that dry. pretty well when they're not mixed up with water. So the next thing I'm going to do is stamp out some background. So let me get my ink pad. So since this is the last step, any ink will work fine with that. So I'm just going to stamp randomly throughout the page. Okay. And I'm going to grab a second stamp just to add more drama to the page. <coughs> stamp some scripts randomly throughout the page. Okay. So that is the end of how I create my second art journal. So you can go ahead and grab your pen, start doodling or, you know, writing a journal or whatever you want on this page. So thank you so much for joining me. And um, the next Ustream show that we will have is by Lynette on June 18th. Thursday, so please check back, check back with us um, to see her wonderful creation. And also, we have uh, a blog hop going on with Heartfelt Creations uh, this month, and it will be a lot of fun. There will be a lot of goodies involved. So follow our Facebook page um, to see the latest and greatest thing going on with art anthologies. And... Um, our free Ustream classes. Thank you so much. Bye!